a Chinese group of scientists has radically improved on past results and the bodies of future piglets have begun to grow almost human kidneys. We are talking about creating human and pig chimeras. How's that for news like this? But what exactly is a chimera? Chimeras are not mythical creatures, but a reality of biotechnology. Chimeras are not hybrids, not GMOs, but organisms that are literally molded from the two. Why? We need them badly. It's all about growing human organs in the body of livestock that would normally be used for food, for spare parts, for an aging humanity. We're not talking about humanized pigs with 10 corrections in their genes. Those pigs were still entirely pigs and had the same pig cells in all their body parts. The pig cells had pig genomes, C20,000 pig genes, and with 10 amendments that should make their kidneys invisible to our immunity, make them a little bit like human kidneys. It's a very different approach, and one that's also worth following if you want to get new kidneys in your old age, or a heart, or a liver, or skin after a burn, or muscle after a severe injury. It's about taking your cells, skin cells for example, and making them into stem cells. What does that mean? It means making them forget that they live in the skin of a non-young person. It means turning back time, taking them back to the first days after your conception. You need to bring your cells back to that era when you were the size of a grain of sand and your cells were ready to build any organ. In parallel, you should start making a piglet in a test tube. And after four days, when it will be the size of a grain of sand itself, plant your stem cells in it then put this creature in the uterus of a sow. And then, most importantly, this whole game has to be played somehow, so that when the pig carries and gives birth to this piglet, it will have your organs, or at least one organ, rather than piglets. Sounds like a useful idea, but very difficult to do technically. The Chinese group got almost human organs this time. In the kidneys, about half the cells were from a human and half from a pig. But let's get back to the important step towards growing chimeras that are already fit for purpose. Pigs in which entire body parts will be fully human. In past attempts, the ratio was not 1-1, but 1-1-1000 in favor of the pig. If you just put human stem cells into a pig embryo, they will die. Because these stem cells have already decided to become a piglet and will not tolerate such guests. How do we make Lego out of two real organisms if we don't know how regular Lego works? That is, how the organism develops on its own. In general, we're pretty good at making chimeras. In fact, some of us are chimeras ourselves. Like Lydia Fairchild from Washington DC, who was forced to give birth to her third child in the presence of the police. With the previous two, she could not prove motherhood because her ovary was not actually hers. Lydia was a chimera, and that organ was inherited by Lydia from her twin sister, which she absorbed while the sisters developed together in their mother's uterus. Or how, on the contrary, Chris Long from Nevada, who had the sperm of an anonymous German from Germany in his scrotum. The latter was a bone marrow donor, and after the transplant, the cells escaped from Chris's bones into his testes and began to turn there into the sperm of the same German. But that's just the way it happened. But to learn how to make chimeras in the lab and control which body parts will grow from which source is a long-time dream of biologists. This is a very useful tool for solving various problems, rather scientific than medical. For example, plant quail cells in a certain part of a chicken embryo. It will be easy to trace the development of this particular part, some organisms make chimeras easily. The first such pair was precisely the quail and the chicken, received in 1969 by French scientists, and it is not hybrids. That is, no chicken has not slept with a quail. It is really molded from two embryos creatures. They have everything mixed up, even the cells in their brains. I wonder what chimerical thoughts went through their heads. Six years ago, a Japanese group did a remarkable experiment. They took black mouse embryos on the fifth day of development and broke the PDX1 gene in them. This gene is key to the development of the pancreas. They introduced into them single cells from normal white rat embryos. 
Scientists grew them and ended up with 34 adult mice that had a fully rat pancreas. With humans and pigs, things are more complicated. We know their genetics less well. But just recently, scientists have created a creature that very much resembles an early human embryo, but without the use of sperm, eggs, or a uterus. Hormones were even produced that resulted in a positive pregnancy test in the lab. The study, published in the journal Nature, is described by an Israeli team from the Weizmann Institute as the first complete embryo model that mimics all the basic structures that arise in an early embryo. The goal, according to the scientists involved in the study, is not to create embryos outside the womb, but to understand how the organs inside them, embryos, develop and use that knowledge to develop new ways to treat people through tissue transplantation. At the same time, they hope to soon shed light on the mysteries of the first stages of human development and the hitherto unknown causes of miscarriages. The next step, as you might already guess, was made possible when they found a matching malfunction in humans. Two rare congenital syndromes are known, in which the human fetus has poorly developing kidneys. Already in the 21st century, it was possible to identify the cause, a breakage in two genes. In each case, the breakage leads to abnormal kidney development and other disorders of varying severity. But there are no people who have two breakdowns at once. The idea is this. The place where Piggy's kidneys should have developed should be populated with Vasya's cells, and they should divide vigorously and occupy maximum space before the amplifiers of the two genes weaken and before the specialization factors become active on these cells. It's a bit like a counterattack. You have to accumulate mass, accumulate resources, and only then should they turn into kidney cells. That's in theory. But to find out what happens in practice, is there a lot of humanity in these kidneys? Scientists have extracted the gene responsible for that bright glow from coral and inserted it into human stem cells. The move, which may seem unusual at first glance, actually has practical implications. After all, when human cells begin to glow with red fluorescent light, it makes them easily distinguishable from millions of other cells. Can you imagine how this helps scientists track their path and function within the animal body? Imagine for a moment a laboratory where 13 sows were participants in an experiment. Analysis of 1,120 chimeras revealed something amazing. In the kidneys of these creatures, 50% of the cells turned out to be human. The new 1.1 ratio is a real breakthrough, far surpassing previous ratios such as 1 to 100,000. This is not just an improvement, it is a qualitative leap forward. The authors of the experiment suggest to take for the chimera not a normal pig, but a pig with 10 corrections in the genes. As we know from the podcast, the immune system already looks favorably on such a kidney, does not reject it. And if that kidney was also 50% human, about the problems. Why did you take it out so early and not wait longer? Because these chimeras mostly resorb after about 30, 40 days, and we wanted to catch and fix the best result. From there, something goes wrong. If these problems are to be solved, the law will have to be dealt with. Six years ago, amidst initial successes, the United States passed a law that prohibits spending taxpayers' money on experiments with human and other animal chimeras. At the same time, however, Japan legalized the birth of such chimeras. So far, no one has succeeded in doing so, and Japan is still the only such country. Earlier this year, a tougher bill emerged in the United States, which, on the contrary, makes it a federal crime to give birth to such a chimera. I assume that immediately there were voices of those for whom eating meat is okay, but mocking a pig like this is not okay. It's really a question. Will the short life of such a chimera be more torturous than that of its normal relatives on a normal farm? Would it be possible to donate its meat for stock? Or would keeping my cells in it make that illegal? Something to think about.